In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a reset button for your lens so that you can let your users reset your lens to some previous state, no matter how complex your lens is, and without having to write any code. All right, so I'm here in Lens Studio, and all I've done is I've opened up the physics template. So that's in File, New Project from Template. You can go to All Categories and find Physics. And that's just so we have a project here that we need to reset, but that's not necessarily straightforward to reset. Now, why is that? That is because we have this wind zone blowing, and when our lens starts, we have these blocks being blown away, and we'd have to reset the positions of all these blocks. Now, we could use a behavior script to do that. You can set positions with it, but that's six blocks, and this is just a simple example. A more complex lens, you don't want to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is use the scene manager. So go to the asset library um, and search for scene manager. Uh, make sure you have that installed. If you have not installed it, there'll be a blue install button. And then also we're going to use the UI button to create our reset button. So I've already installed it. If you had not, there'd be this little blue install. So make sure you install that. And let's go ahead and start creating our scene. I'm going to start by creating a screen image. And this is just going to create a new orthographic camera for me, uh, create the screen image. I don't want the screen image, but instead of deleting this, come over here and delete just that component because we want the screen transform to now add our UI button. So you can search for that. Let's add it. And once this comes into our scene, it's going to be quite large. So let's select all our full frame region and we'll set this to safe render. And now we can choose our button and we can make it much smaller. Uh, so let's just stick it here on the side and let's call it reset the text. And for our button action, I'm going to turn on edit event callbacks so that when we push the button, we can send out a signal and I'll send a behavior custom trigger uh, and let's just do on press down, and my trigger will be reset. So I'll type all caps. We need to remember this. This is a uh, trigger that we'll be sending out. Uh, so we have our button. Uh, you can add an animation if you want. Let's just do a squish. And there we go. So we have a button, but it's obviously not doing anything yet. So let's come over here, and we're going to start by creating a scene object. And I'm going to call this my scene manager because on this object, we're going to add our scene manager. So what the scene manager does is it lets us uh, load prefabs. We'll get to the prefabs in a second. That's very useful because we can control when these things load. So we have this local scene registry. I'm going to click add value and it's going to ask for a scene name. So I'll just call it main. You can call it whatever you want. And it wants this asset. It wants a prefab. So you can see that this template has this chick physics body prefab. A prefab is basically just like a scene or an object or something just packaged up so you can easily recreate it. So what we want to do is take our entire scene that we want to reset and put it into a prefab. Now the nice thing about this template is this world camera examples has everything inside of it. Uh, if your project had lots of things in this object hierarchy, you could create a scene object. We call this like main scene. And then you just select everything that needs to go into it and drag it in. Now, I'm not going to do that here because we already have this. So I'll just delete that. Uh, but the key is make sure everything's inside a single object. Uh, and you can see you can include the camera, you can include scripts, anything you want. Uh, so anything that's part of the scene that would need to be reset, put it in there. Right click and click Save as Prefab. Now you'll see this icon changes to this box with a P. You get this World Camera Examples down here. So this will have the same name as this here. And this is now our prefab. So come to our Scene Manager. And our scene asset is this World Camera Examples Try Me. So that is our scene. It's called Main. And that's all we need to do with the scene manager. Now, uh, we have our button sending out this trigger. So let's add a behavior script to now create our scene anew each time we push that button. So you can come up here. Uh, you can find helper scripts. 
find behavior. Now we'll add it to your scene. And so with this behavior script, we want our trigger to be a custom trigger. And if you remember with our button, we called it reset in all caps. And we will always allow that. And we want our response to be scene manager load scene. So that'll be down at the bottom. And now we have a few options here. So scene name, I named my main. So if you forget it, just click on your scene manager, see what your scene name is. So let's type that in here. So we got main. Uh, load type asynchronous or synchronous. The difference is synchronous is going to be blocking, so things will have to wait for your scene to load. Asynchronous means it kind of goes in the background. We can leave it as asynchronous. And then here are our other options. Load additively, we'll just add it on top of what's already in the scene. We don't want to do that. We only want one version of our scene. So we'll turn that off. Load enabled, we'll make sure it's enabled. Uh, we do want that. So let's go ahead and now push our button and see what happens. So we'll click reset. And there's a slight pause and you can see there are extra boxes. You can see, uh, depending on when you hit reset, it might be in sync, but now we have multiple versions of our scene. Uh, so that's not necessarily what we want, but we know that our button is now creating the scene. And you might notice each time I click it, I'm not getting more and more boxes, I'm just kind of getting those duplicates. And you can see the flicker in here, those fans are kind of overlapping each other. So what's happening here is our original scene is staying in here, and we click the button, we just make a copy of it. So there's two copies. So what we could do is if we disable this, uh, you might notice that um, we lose all visibility here, which isn't great. And we'll restart our lens. Uh, with physics, sometimes you have to manually reset here. You can see we have nothing here. Now if I hit reset, it's going to create our scene. And if I hit reset again, it's going to recreate it for us. Uh, we don't have the extra boxes or extra wind zones. So we're part of the way there. So how can we kind of clean this up so we can still see our scene here to edit, but not have it starting out here in um, our actual preview. So what we can do is we're going to add another behavior script. Uh, so you can just click on this gear, copy, paste, and we're going to create two more behavior scripts. So go ahead and hit paste again. So this first one we'll keep as our response to our, our trigger. This one here, we're going to say on start or on awake. Let's just say on start. Uh, this one, when our lens starts up, we want to load that scene. Uh, the problem is now you see we have two copies here. The original one right here plus the one from our scene manager. Uh, so over here, we also want this to be on start. And instead of loading a scene with the scene manager, uh, we're going to take this and choose set enabled up here. And we're going to go ahead and disable our existing prefab here. So you can click and drag that in, or you can click to select. We'll go with disable. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. So it's just taking a second to catch up. All right, so we have one version of our scene. I can click the reset button. Sorry, my studio is lagging for a second. Uh, so while we get that second to catch up, let's just do a quick recap. So we have our trigger, uh, our reset trigger, we'll use the scene manager to load our scene. Uh, we have another behavior script to when the lens starts to load the scene to make sure something's there. And then we have this one here to disable our existing prefab so that we can see things here, make changes, but it doesn't show up in the lens. So let's give that a try. Let's reset. And you see our lens starts over. And you can do this however many times you want. And it's going to reset everything as it was before. And there are not multiple copies. So now our button is basically doing the same thing as if we were to click this reset button in Lens Studio. The only difference being now the person on their device can use this reset button. So that is pretty cool.
Uh, it is, um, I mean, it's a little bit of work. It's not too bad just to add three behavior scripts. Um, but we're going to go over one thing that can trip you up pretty easily when it comes to prefabs. Um, this gets me all the time still. So I'm going to come into here and I want to, let's, let's create some more boxes. Let's say I want to stack up three boxes instead of two. So I'm going to hit control D or you can right click and choose duplicate. And let's just move that up a little bit. So I have a stack of three boxes and actually let's duplicate it again uh, to have a stack of four boxes. Now let's reset our lens to see our changes. And we only have two boxes. So what's going on? So this is our scene that we turned into a prefab. This is the prefab. This is what our scene manager is loading, but it is distinct from this prefab up here in our scene. Uh, it's kind of like a snapshot at the time that we created the prefab. So if you want to make changes, make your changes up here, but then you're going to see this like apply button up here. So if you click apply uh, and hit reset, let's give it a second. Now you get the four boxes. So with prefabs, when you make a change, it's not gonna save it to this prefab down here unless you hit apply. Um, so don't worry about highlight or revert, just as you make a change, make sure you hit apply. And so that will actually save those changes to the prefab uh, down here. So if you look at the little hint here, it says uh, to apply any changes made to prefab instance to the prefab resource. So this is our prefab resource this is some object we can use, and this is an instance. We took that resource and we created it. And so if you want to make changes, anytime you make changes, make sure you hit apply. So that is going to change your workflow a little bit. Um, but uh, now you have the ability to reset a complex lens. Uh, so it's probably a worthwhile trade-off. Just remember to hit apply in order to get that reset.